by the way i drink coffee for the for the first time in like a year and three quarters Boy, that afternoon. must have been something it was it was what? Like, oh it was it already <laughs> happened okay you know, like I was like, man, why don't I drink this stuff all the time? And I was just like, <laughs> oh, OK, all right. All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Father Turpo and Cyprian, since we're at a Lent, what's your guys' like, favorite like meat and cheese combo? Like, if you're just like, like, if you make like one of those little sandwiches with just meat and cheese, like, what do you go for? Because I just found mine tonight is roast beef and provolone. You just like oh. wrap that up, and it's just like, oh, I was like, I, I had turkey and cheddar after that. And I was like, no, roast beef and provolone is absolutely where it's at. So, mm. uh, I I'm, I might be either like chicken and provolone or turkey and Swiss. I turkey think turkey and Swiss. I think I would have to go turkey and Swiss turkey with and avocado. Swiss. Oh, I mean, yeah. I gotta add avocado in there. Avocados make me sick. I don't know what the deal is with them. Stop. Every time Stop. I eat them, they make me sick. Yeah. I, I, Man, that is the that is the most I, sad thing that I've I heard know. I was, this, I was about to say, I'm so sorry for you. Oh my gosh, man! I, you better horrible. believe every time I go to a party and I see a bunch of guacamole sitting out, I'm just like, oh, that sucks. Man. But they like they make my oh. stomach hurt, and then for some reason my right ear gets really hot. So you have an allergy? Know. Yeah, you it's have probably allergy, some yeah. kind of allergy. Yeah, yeah. It, it happens with a couple types of food. Really cheap pasta does the same thing to me. If it's not high quality stuff, so I gotta have the best pasta if I'm gonna eat avocado, it. Avocado, uh, dude, avocados are nothing. There's nothing better than avocado. I, I will have yeah. to agree with that. Uh, Man, avocado. nothing better than avocado. It's my cross to bear. It's my cross wow. to bear. It's crazy. Yeah, real quick, I would just say um, my favorite combo is uh, well, like um, bacon and pasta cheese. <laughs> That's a Wait, good what one. Is, what is Pasca cheese? Oh, this is why you got to come here for a Pasca, Cyprian. This hey, is what, is what is Pasca cheese? Man, Pasca cheese. Is... nails. The oh pasta man, Papadia. She can make some Pasca cheese, pasta boy. Cheese. Yeah, it's this like I don't know how they make it, but it's like um, this kind of like it's not cream cheese, okay. but it's uh, it's more yellow. And cream cheese it's like yeah it's is it like a soft cheese it's, it's very soft, soft. It's, it's very a... soft like a spread it's mm. kind of sweet it's like cur it's like mm. it's like it's, the, a... it's like the curdled cream turned into just like it's it's just... you know what it is cyprian and this mm. is one of my this i mean this absolutely in the 100 percent most positive manner i can the very old world cheese like yeah. it's just like a very like it just tastes like food there's just it's nothing else. It just tastes like good, yeah. yummy food. It's just a recipe that's probably been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah, and it's, it's just really right. good. Well, but oh, yeah, yeah, just like <laughs> bacon, just with just used as the dipping utensil with in the box, pasta cheese. It's just oh, it's oh. Like now bacon. So yeah, bacon. Typically, it would be bacon cheddar, right? This is typical. This is the typical combo for bacon. Is bacon. I'm a bacon Swiss guy, actually. Bacon Swiss. I don't Do think there's like, a cheese okay. that's necessarily paired with bacon. Bacon's like a free agent. You can do whatever yeah. you want with bacon and cheese. You can, but let me tell you about bacon Swiss though, because the dryness and the mellowness of the Swiss. Mm. It really mm. complements just those savory nodes of the bacon. Yeah, it really does. Now melted, right? We're talking melted here. No, not necessarily. Just I mean, taking the trail, the fridge, wrap it up. Yeah, just three o'clock in the afternoon, and you need to eat something because it's okay. still like three more dinners, three more, <laughs> three more hours for dinner. Okay. So yeah, I mean that's what I did this afternoon. I was starving, and so I just like some roast beef and some 
provolone. I was like, this is the best meat and cheese combo out there, in my opinion. All right. So you get yourself some pepper jack. Yeah, well, pepper jack is really good. Oh, yeah. Man, pepper jack is really man. I sleep on pepper jack way too much because it's one of my favorite cheeses. But I like don't ever ever even think to mess with it. So what's the meat with pepper jack? You would say, father. Ooh. I mean roast beef. I mean roast my beef run with jack? roast beef would be okay. like yeah pepper jack. I went straight to salami. I think salami is great with pepper jack. It's the spicy I agree with and the that. spicy. Oh, I agree with that. It's I like that, that spiced, but that spice. I don't know. That's just me. I mean, I don't know. A little bit of mustard. You, you know, I'm thinking like hors d'oeuvres that is that's well, like you know a cracker mm. and then that's the what, meat um, and then the cheese. I'm thinking that salami every time with the pepper jack. Oh, every time man. I eat crackers, meat, and cheese, I'm like, why do I eat anything else other than this? <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> like, essentially, this is all I want is a carb, a dairy, and a meat, and that's it. <laughs> that's, yeah. And I'm like. Every time I do it, I'm like, why do I mess with anything else? This should it's be the, the rest of my life. the least kosher thing you could possibly eat. Like, it's absolutely not kosher, especially if it's pork. <laughs> like, so oh, it's, it's, it's very it Christian. Better. It's very yeah. Christian of you. <laughs> I was going to say, I, luckily, that's not a concern of mine. So <laughs> that little K with the circle is on the bottle. I could not care less. I'm yep. eating it either way. So, okay, well. Apparently, we like meat and cheese and crackers, and I'm yeah. okay with it. Wait, okay. Then we'll just end on this, not the podcast, but this segment. What's the best cracker to stack on top of? Like, um, I'm a Triscuit guy. Triscuits. So. That's it, man. It's Triscuits. Triscuit you, need, you need a thick, chewy it's probably, like, it's cracker. Probably, it's probably Triscuits. Yeah, I'm a Triscuit yeah. guy. I can't, right. th- I can't think of something that would be better than a Triscuit. Mm-hmm. Saltines are right out. Like no, that's, that's just gone. that's lame. That's nothing. There's so. this Keebler cookie, uh, not cookie, a Keebler chip. I don't know or not chip cracker. I don't know what it's called, but they're kind of long and thin. They're like but very buttery. And then oh, they've the got club. the little waves. Club, Is that the, the club, club, the, the club. club, the club. Yeah, it's the club. That would be my only other. Yeah, because that's so good. That's so that's like good. the buttery. Yeah, mm. that's, that's my only other choice besides a Triscuit. If that's otherwise, I'm going Triscuit. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what is not... so what is our topic for today? Well, I had one, but you guys shot it down. So what do you guys got? You know, you know, what we've never, ever, ever, ever touched on, mm. which I think we should have, although it's not relevant necessarily anymore. We could talk about it. Is the ten green commandments that the Pope came out with or whatever? Do you guys remember this? What are they? they? Is how to be green. He came out with a new tank and went to Mount Sinai, I think, and displayed 10 new green commandments about being green, about loving the earth and like how being uh, like polluting can is we a pull, sin. Can we pull them you up? Know, hold on. Go ahead. Let's talk. Let's break the fourth wall a little bit. Let's talk about um, influence and even okay. just uh, the nature of how things have changed in regards of um, like orthodoxy and just the fact that like this, like our platform and the platforms and um, you know, there was this attack that was put out against um, Father Peter Hears yep. this last mm. week. Mm. And, uh, and then I saw that there's this other guy um, I forget his name. He he does this um, mainline Novus Ordo um, podcast, Reason Theology, and he had this other guy like Benjamin Gabe or Caber. Um, it's not that you're not talking about the pints with Aquinas guy, are you? No, no, no. His his name's it's uh, Michael Lofton, I think it is. Okay. He had like a beef with Jay Dyer or Jay. Okay. Yeah. He had a beef with yeah. Jay Dyer. And, um, and so he interviewed this, this guy who runs this other thing like the aura and just, you know, just really, um, wokey liberal watered down, you know, quote, quote unquote, orthy stuff. And so he had him on a show and they're talking about, um, like the dark side of, orthodoxy and the dark side of like orthodoxy internet and all that stuff you know what is the dark side of orthodoxy let me shoot it out to you make and pull it up it's like basically they're talking about like they 
they were headhunting Father Peter. They're headhunting uh, Deacon Ananias. Uh, obviously, head, head, these, head these guys these guys were doing the headhunting, or these guys were commenting on the fact that these that these individuals were being headhunted. So this I, my, this Gabe they were the headhunters. Yeah, they're they were head, the yeah, this Gabe and Michael Lofton guy. They're headhunting, exposing the dark side of Orthodox apologetics, and so Benjamin Gabe. Gay, okay, gay, gay something, okay. and then something, <laughs> and then Michael Lofton. This was this whole thing in there. Basically, just I I can only stomach so much of it. But the guy's talking about you know when he came into the church, it was just a different faith than what he's encountered. And he was talking about I started noticing all of these things, you know, like I don't know, like extreme perspectives. And it's like, what is this? You know, kind of where is this coming from? Oh my, um, oh my good oh my goodness like the thumbnail yeah ah man this thumbnail is inappropriate in my opinion yeah um yeah yeah what is what this is so weird yeah Hold on let me uh let me actually I think this is fine so I think this would be really good because you know um I'm, I'm actually going to be in another conversation soon um, um, with some other people about this with like, um, yeah, I, I like this. Um, I, I, I do think this is a good and timely, Oh man, I wish I could just show the thumb. How can I show the thumbnail? Hold on. Let me make sure this is what you're talking about, but it does have the, are we talking about this? Right here, exposing yeah. the dark side of yeah. orthodox apologetics. Yeah. Well, the thumbnail, the thumbnail <laughs> yeah. is. Uh, yeah, there's the thumbnail. Yeah. Peter Man. Hears, Jay Dyer, Deacon Ananias. Deacon Ananias. Yeah. And this Michael Lofton guy kind of being. I don't know what. Like that, wow. I don't know what that pose is, but. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the that's the judge judgmental pose. Yeah. That's yeah. the that's the I sit in judgment because it's the king on the throne, right? Yeah, hearing I am the humoring hearing you. the the different uh, hearing the different people, right? Like, okay, you tell me your side, you tell me your side. It's the judge. Yeah, that's the, the that's that's the judge pose it's the judge. right there. So then, I guess my question would be, how do you see stuff like this? Because one of the problems I have with looking at stuff like that is that my blood begins to boil. And like a way where I'm like, this is does not feel like maybe I shouldn't be feeling this way. Like maybe I should like this. I mean, that's first of all. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it. Right. Because. um, I mean, we can go so many places with this, but like the intention, obviously, of that is not to. I mean, maybe they think they're trying to do the faithful a, a service, but the intention is to try to kind of be quasi grifting and pull even more, you know, likes by, you know, uh, provoking sure. and, and getting people's ire up. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's, that's definitely part of it, you know, but it, it, it's, it's interesting though, just because the timing though, um, and, and the timing in regards again with, uh, you know, this, um, attack on father peter that's that's happened this past week and you know this coming out um and really you know i I guess even to some degree kind of like what we were talking about in the um in the chat earlier it's like just taking a step back and really kind of reflecting like where are we at now you know because it seems as if you know a couple things i'll just make a, a kind of observation on I've never seen in in my years in the church and talking with other brothers who are, you know, other priests who are, you know, priests far longer than I and other people, um, when, you know, my spiritual father is one of them, just like no one's seen this kind of exposure and growth in the church, at least in in recent memory, you know, and even um, the EOC with like Peter Gilquest and them coming in, that's different. That was like a group of people, even though it was a large group of people, this has been, there's no one's ever seen anything like this before. And it's obviously due to the proliferation of, you know, information and exposure through the internet, talking about orthodoxy and 
coupled with, because this is the cocktail, um, you know, my, my man Tucker's speech, which man. is like really good, right? So mm. here's here's the cocktail. Um, Twenty is the beginning of the apocalypse. The beginning of the apocalypse, or un, or a apocalypse. Excuse me. The beginning of a apocalypse. There's an uncovering. There's a revelation. Everyone's like something evil has come, and and people who, you know, for lack of a better word, were just kind of like sleeping, awakened and like, okay, something's really wrong. And it goes beyond just weird politics and whatever. Something's wrong, right? So that's one portion of the the cocktail. The other portion of it is obviously um, the medium and things like you know people being in lockdown and like having more access and more time to orthodoxy via the internet that sparks interest, right? And that interest is fueled by the world is messed up and there's real evil going on, right? And then, you know, on, on top of all that, I think people feeling probably for the first time in most people's lives, people felt an existential threat on a larger level beyond a car accident or cancer because people felt the threat of COVID or people felt the threat of dying in a, you know, a race riot because of BLM or, you know what I mean? There's things that people's mortality, they, they thought about it a little bit more than they used to. And so that, that thought and remembrance of death was this, you know, kind of perfect concoction to get people's hearts and minds opened to truth and to Christ to a bigger scale than it was before. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? You know, yes. is that, does that kind of That's, set it yeah. up? I don't think anybody would argue with that who's got their eyes open. Yeah. You know, so so with that being said, you know, um, parishes across the country, even parishes that were, you know, COVIDians and woke and like went with the lockdowns, even they're seeing growth. Um, they saw, you know, now they're seeing growth. I, I talked with someone, I think I'd share this, you know, <laughs> it was ridiculous. He had said that um, the growth was because of, you know, the live streaming when uh, it's absurd. The, the growth is because no. of, you know, quote unquote influencers, whatever. But anyways, I, I just think it's, it's interesting because now, there's this thing and um, people are really hungry and they're searching for truth. And what's interesting is, you know, this, um, it's almost like it's at, it's not too, I, I don't know where it's at actually in the interview, but that, that Gabe guy, Benjamin Gay, he, he was saying that like, again, he, this thing about the faith that he came into, I guess he came in in 2015. I don't know when he came in, but He's saying it was different faith than like what he's seeing now. And, you know, my comment on that is like, well, kind of like good, you know, because, because, you know, what's happened is, is people are kind of combing through the superficials of orthodoxy. And, I, and I'll just tell you straight up, you know, I was talking about this with my godson, who's a priest um, a couple of weeks ago. And for a lot of people, they're brought into the church and it is what it is. It's not a judgment call. It's just dogs bark and cats meow. But a lot of people spend a lot of years on a very the kind of superficial level of the church. And, you know, it's exotic. It's you know, all the things. Um, but what's interesting is now people are able to go deeper into things like repentance and temptations and really getting what orthodoxy is about, which is the healing of the human person. Um, and and they're, they also it's being united with Christ. So, I say all that because what's interesting is that, um, you know, these people, you know, uh, this gay guy and um, this that, lofty this guy, guy. Lofty, gonna gay, whatever, gay guy and lofty guy, That's they, a... they are, you know, it's just funny. They're highlighting something that it, it's, forgive me for going there. It, it's not quite the same, but I mean, in the same sense of, you remember when the high priest says, let his blood uh, be upon us and our children forever. He didn't realize what he was saying. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of like the same thing in a weird inverted way is that they're coming against what they think is a dark side. But the people that they're highlighting are people who are trying to bring out the really transformative, challenging, and I would dare say even salvific aspects of orthodoxy. Because the, the, the Gabe guy, 
and Lofty, they're they're ecumenists, right? And so for them, it's just all the same. It doesn't really matter. So even on that sense, if you want to argue from that perspective of, of an ecumenist perspective, then I would say like, well, the things that they're bringing forward, these these dark side people are the aspects of the Orthodox tradition that are actually like salvific because they, they bring a person into a sharp contrast with themselves and with the world. Whereas the Michael Lofty and, and this, this Gabe guy, like they promote, oh, they promote a Christianity and traditions that are worldly and that are basically very much about um, the kind of etiquette that, puts forward politeness and things to, to the detriment of transformation and death, <laughs> you know, death of the ego, death of all these things. So let me, just, let me just finish one part. So all that being said, you know, when you look at, um, with like father Peter hears again, you know, I mean, listen, you know, it's all Christ or whatever, but let's just be frank. Everyone owes father Peter a debt um, in regards of he was like the first to really, and with boldness come out about, the COVID narrative and all and all, a lot of these things. And, I mean, the exemption that he put together, Father, yeah. I can speak for my own family, like the power of that when it was presented to our health authorities here. Mm -hmm. Basically, that got the health authority here. I, I don't know if I've told this story publicly, but I know you've heard it, Father. Mm -hmm. um, basically got the 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 head of the 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 basically our, our head health officer to call me on the phone when I had sent this to her saying, because they were talking about potentially having some mandates or whatever they were voting on it. It didn't happen. She called and she said, okay, I've read this. I just want you to know all the Orthodox people here will be exempted. Amen. She's like, Amen. she said, Catholics have been asking for a religious exemption and it's a Catholic place mm -hmm. with a Catholic Bishop on Island. And she said, Catholics have been asking for an exemption, but their church isn't allowing them an exemption. So we can't offer that to them. They're religious. We well, they had the exemption. billboard. I've never seen the billboard. Uh -huh. He was on it. So, But she said, I just want you to know, have no concerns. I We've seen this. It's been passed along. All Orthodox people on the island will be exempted. So, I mean, and and that was from Father, Father Peter here. Father so Peter when is. I see somebody say, you know, dark side. I'm like, no, no, no. You shall know them by their fruits. That's, That's right. fruits. That's yeah. right. That's fruits. His, I don't know. <laughs> you his know. video on um on Satanism and the bricklayers is fantastic. It's like he has like an 18 minute on video transhumanism. on transhumanism. I I mean, the yeah. way he's going after transhumanism, I, like yeah. I I don't need, I can't even say like I couldn't even watch huge... this thing if that guy's got Father Peter there. Like I can't even watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's just it's interesting to me again because it's it's you know one of the one of the telltale signs of end times. Not saying that we're in the end times. I'm just saying, but like you know, calling what is good evil, what is evil good, and mm -hmm. just the kind of inversion of things, and even the fact that like this communique was sent out, and it, it's just you know, uh, there's so many things that are wrong so many egregious things that are wrong um and so it, it's it's interesting to me because you know there's this real um dilemma that i think people are facing which is and, and again it's interesting to me because people want to point the finger at people you know like deacon ananias and father peter and, and jay dyer and, and other people and they want to point the finger and say these people are radicalizing people and this and that, but I'm like, you know, uh, what about like the priests and the hierarchs who just closed churches? And I, I know it's old hat. I know for everyone here it's old hat, but I'm just saying like, you know, some things, some things you, you can't forget, not out of a weird passionate desire for vengeance, which we've talked about, you know, which your conversation with Buck, which, which was excellent on that. There's I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, if someone tells you who they are, believe them, you know? And so mm -hmm. this, this reality of, you know, who is really pursuing Christ, who is really trying to facilitate the, the repentance and, and the union of Christ and his church, like who, who really desires that now no one's perfect. You know, we all have our flaws. Me, of course, being, you know, the most abundant of them all. But still, if you look at the fruits um, and you look at the people who are, you know, again, 
when you have people who are um, knocking someone for being zealous for Christ, I understand that there's a zealous, there's there's a zeal without knowledge that happens, and that happens to everyone. And but you know, I, I would rather deal with someone who has a bit of zeal for Christ and is willing to listen versus someone who's you know lukewarm and full of themselves and and they're are they're trying to compromise of the life of, of the church, you know? And it's funny because when they talk about, again, getting back to this guy, I hate giving him so much airtime, but it, it's worth it because he's, you know, this guy, these opinions, um, I, I wish they were a greater minority than they may be, but, um, you know, there's lots yeah. of people who have these opinions and I think they hold these opinions without ever really um, questioning them. And, you know, because, well, nobody wants to look like a fanatic, right? You know, and it's it's very much, and I mean, I see it all the time, especially in regards of like, let's say race, you know, it's just kind of like, there's just this stereotype or this party line that like, quote unquote, black people feel like they need to carry just because it's disseminated yeah. and they don't want, they don't want to question it. And I think it's the same thing, maybe with a lot of people who may find themselves in a, you know, depending on the salary of the priest, maybe like, you know, a parish where they're not really wanting to challenge certain things. And that's, that's scary. That's scary because it seems like, and I guess this is maybe getting to it. um, It seems like this push here, I wouldn't, the people who are doing the shows, they just want hits. They just want likes. They just want numbers. Sure. But the, the enemy is also, he's playing chess so like, what is what is the enemy trying to do? Like, what's the setup in regards of trying to really begin to cut people off from some of those um, sources of encouragement? Let's just say encouragement. We don't even have to say anything past that. What, what's it seems as if the enemy is trying to make a move and really kind of trying to shut down um, sources of encouragement. And it's almost as if you know, I was, I was telling. Um, I was telling a brother here the other day, it's like, I'm like, man, I better step it up. You know, it's almost like, where's your, it's a badge of honor to really start getting clamped down on now by some of these, you know, quote unquote Mm -hmm. powers that be, because they're very quick to want to promote things that are detrimental to the spiritual life of believers, you know, and those who are actually trying to promote health and repentance are very quickly um, maligned. You know, that's what, at least what it seems like to me. Yeah. And what's I, I, that? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Andrew. I want to botch this, but there was that. Um, oh, I can't remember. He's some Anglican priest and he did this whole talk. Uh, I oh. sent it to you, Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the, the English the Maximus. Oxford, at the that? Oxford Union, the guy who was at the Oxford Union. What was his name? Um, He's great. Black, black guy, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah, yeah. he just called them out yeah. for just he's like, yeah. yeah. And he ended that Great. whole ended that whole perfect speech with a quote from St. Athanasius. And yeah. I was just like, beautiful. Yeah. And it was like if um something about like if if this is what the world is, then I'm against the world. Yeah. Like something like that. If this is yeah. what the world is promising, then I'm against the world. I'm botching it. Yeah. I know I am. It's close that's, though. That's yeah, close. it's and like yeah. that is because there was two things I wanted to t- touch on really quick, Father. You said being polite to the detriment of the teachings, because I think that's a royal path moment right there as well. It's very easy to walk around and just be like a big old curmudgeon to everybody and just be like, well, you know, you don't believe the same thing that I do about X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. so I'm going to be very rude to you about it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, like you've cut off any potential, like, there's no hand being reached out to them anymore, if you know what I mean. So like, and then there's the other side, which is falling to the left, which is like participating in that idiocy with them. And not that they're an idiot, but they're partaking in idiocy. So like, I, you know, that's what it is. And then, Oh, what was the other one? I can't remember. Um, But yeah, I think that that, that was important for me. And I wanted to touch on that because I was, I very much fell to the right, right away where it's just like, your heretic and your hair and maybe they are but like you know it's like i'm just a little layman like i don't know if i necessarily need to be making like i might i might be getting like ahead of myself and 
you know what I mean? Like, so I can't remember what the other thing was, but then in the falling into the other side of like, part, oh, I have like actively like participating in that error with them. Like I can't do that either. So that's one of those Royal path moments of having to be like, you come back at any time, but like, I can't go down this road with you. Like mm-hmm. whenever you want to come back and then gosh, dang it. What was the other thing? I can't remember. Cyprian, you had a question. Well, I, I mean, I, I wanted to give, you know, I've been sharing with you guys all of the people in like my general circle who got baptized on like Lazarus Saturday, basically. Mm-hmm. It was just, they were coming out of the woodworks. Even in my private groups, I was like, what? Where I was like, oh, this person, they were like, oh, me too, me too, me too, me too, me too. And others who were like just going deeper into the faith and maybe, you know, uh, their priest had said they weren't quite ready yet, but all of them going deeper and like really going deeper in, in Lent and I had been, there had been, and it, I mean, it's some, it's one of the reasons we're doing this. We've been doing this project, right? Is that like, I had seen people coming along and I had been interested and I had been observing to see like, hmm, um, you know, and most of the people it's been from the right for obvious reasons, because I think this was an apocalypse, an easy apocalypse for people, the last three years for people on the right. And particularly a lot of people who call themselves right wing. Mm-hmm. Right, who who are because it was like okay orthodoxy and it does i mean the libertarian to orthodox pipeline right like everybody's talked about it um and a lot of the libertarians for whom there was the libertarian to orthodox pipeline it was the right side of the libertarians the social the more socially conservative right side of the libertarians and i had been very interested because i think that you know we've everybody has spoken for a long time about like what the influence of the left coming into these, especially these other denom- Protestant denominations, Methodist comes immediately to mind. Episcopal also comes to mind, right. To where it's like s- sanctioning gay marriage, uh, these sorts of things, right. Uh, rainbow flags out in front of the church. We've seen all of that. Right. So like the fall off to the left and what I've been, what I had been very interested to see was, you know, okay, These individuals coming into the church, I knew that some of the views that they held were far to the right in terms of lacking in mercy. Hmm. Right. And like the I I think the what what I've observed. And look, it's just a microcosm, so it's just anecdotal, but stood out to me was that. There's an impulse there and maybe, Father, this was something that like. This is what I wanted to bring bring up with you. I'm glad we're talking. I'm glad you brought it up. But like, because it just happened this week that like what I'm seeing is that there's an impulse to in the same way that the left that we've seen the left do it with things like, well, there used to be female deacons. So we should mm-hmm. like reinstate the female diaconate. Right. Mm-hmm. And like there used to be these sorts of things. I've also seen and it's weird because it's like you know, this idea of ideological possession and you always know what the person's going to say next in the conversations that I've had independently. It's like, ah, I hold this, I hold this belief. And then the thing is like, oh, well, that doesn't have a lot of mercy, brother. Mm -hmm. Like there's not really mercy there. That's not, that's not, doesn't sound really pointed at Christ. And then it's like, and then they immediately say, but Byzantium, Mm -hmm. but Byzantium, they did this in Byzantium though. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the church has moved forward. Sure. And it's not that anything has changed. It's just that Christ's mercy has had a chance to, they were coming out of Rome. Right. Like Christ's mercy has had a chance to like answer this, to, to, to save more individuals. And so like, that's not going on, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, you've talked about the the fact that Byzantium had to fall and all of that, but I just wanted to get your thoughts, like, because I think that there's that there's people who want to shoehorn some of these things that they believed were virtuous from a right wing standpoint that are greatly lacking in mercy, and who are n- newly baptized and who are still holding on to them. Yeah, yeah. If I could just really quick, I wanted to add chime in. I was actually having a conversation with someone not too long ago, and he was talking about. He was like, well, at a certain point, like there was a time in which like more uh, there that the heretics were more moral than the Christian church was. 
And he was like, and I used to think, yeah, hear me out. And I used to think that heresy was the worst thing you could do. And then he was like, but there, but then you look back and there's all these people that were like praying to God and the Christians weren't praying to God before then. And I'm like, okay, back up. Like there's something really wrong with this argument right here because like one, you're talking about morality. Like morality has little to do with it. Like, yeah, it's good to be moral. But like father said a long time ago, there's a story. Uh, a wealthy person is dying. He's got the servants. And, or I think an Orthodox priest and a Muslim are talking. And then the Muslim's like, but we follow the law. The priest says like, yeah, so the rich household, the 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 patriarch is dying and he's going to give his bequeath his inheritance. The judge. It's a judge and a priest. Yeah. There it is. Thank you, yeah. Father. And it yeah. says like, yeah, who gets your inheritance? The servants or the children, you know? Yeah. The children are obedient. The children are not obedient. The servants are. Who gets the inheritance? The children yes. still get the inheritance, right? Beautiful. I don't understand. Like, I don't. I, I genuinely don't understand what's being said right now, though, in regards of the. I think the argument was was that like at certain points there have been times, and I don't agree <laughs> with this, that the morality of the heretic has superseded their had they have become maybe like quote unquote more no. pleasing to god i no. know no. and no. my response <laughs> no. was that no. judas that saint, was... <laughs> no. that saint that was like being accused yeah. and and then basically he's like you're a liar you're a cheat you're a you're a you're a fornicator he's like yes yes i am yes i am and they got to your heretic he's like nope no i am yep. not i am yep. not a heretic because that yep. cuts you off so i I was trying to shoehorn this question in of being like, yeah, we can talk about morality. We could talk about the right versus the left. We could talk about who's like got more proper behavior. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because <clears throat> I haven't watched much of the lofting guys thing, but some of the things I have seen from him in the past, um, you know, especially with this thing with uh, Jay Dyer was like, you know, he's mean and this and stuff like that. And it, it it's just interesting to me because that's something you hear. And not just because, I mean, Jay Dyer is an, an easy target. You know, I mean, he's he's an easy target to talk about, like, his approach or his disposition or his, his personality. But, like, I actually think it's very fruitful for people to be aware of this because um, theology and history – which is what he discusses, right? Jay Dyer doesn't discuss uh, really spirituality or even things of a pastoral nature. He discusses things on an academic level, and I mean that in a positive way. He discusses things on an academic, philosophical level. And, like, who cares whether you think he's mean or not? Like, that's part of the problem, is that people want to inject a greater measure of personality and, um, you know, this kind of, I don't even know what the word would be, the saccharine. It, it's this whole thing of like conflating being charitable with being, you know, sappy or ignorant or, or nice. And that's really dangerous because that's a big way that, a, you know, a quote unquote leftist, progressive, wokey, disposition subverts authentic life in Christ for a lot of people because they think I'm a Christian now. I want to re really be a Christian. So I have to be like nice because G and so like this thing of nice, I mean, nice has nothing to do with salvation because nice we've talked about like just means ignorant. Like nice is, that's not a thing. Being kind is not the same thing as being nice. Hmm. You know what I mean? Being charitable is not the same thing as nice. And really being merciful is not the same thing. And so people conflate these things. And really the root of it is vainglory and man pleasing. People just want to be liked by others. They want people to see them in a certain light. And they want to tag on that projection onto Christ and say, oh, that person's mean. That person's whatever. He's not like Christ. Oh, don't say that, brother. That's not, and that's baloney. None of that has anything to do with Christ. Now, on the other end, that doesn't mean you can just, like you were saying earlier, Andrew, that doesn't mean you can just be cruel and, and you know, uncharitable. 
you know, and, you know, course jesting, as St. Paul says in Ephesians. But I, I, th- I think the reality is, is that, you know, um, there's plenty about Christ that, you know, if we want to kind of chop it up and just, you know, pull it out of context and be like, well, this doesn't sound very nice. Well, this isn't very nice. And, and, and the key thing that I really want to get at is that disposition to conflate, you know, well, number one, to conflate, again, like I was saying, charity with, you know, being nice, whatever, mercifulness, it's dangerous because when people, when people maintain a, such a superficial level of orthodoxy, they're going to have a superficial level of who, of who Christ is. Mm. I was just having this conversation with um, Asher uh, over dinner tonight, and we we're talking about like I know it seems it may seem like a you know kind of a non sequitur, but I, I think it'll tie in. Talk about tattoos, you know. I know people just you know making a big deal about tattoos. I said, I said look, you know. Um, you are not going to find someone who's authentically pursuing the spiritual life and repentance, making a big deal out of something like that. And I'll tell you why, because it's an external thing. Anyone who's genuinely pursuing the spiritual life is worried about those things they know will tank you spiritually. Right. And more importantly, they're worried about their own plate, not what other people are doing. Right. And that's the thing about niceness and what it's like, why are you so worried about night? Like, I don't care whether Jay Dyer or Michael Lofton, I don't care whether someone's nice or not. What are they saying? Yeah. What is the content of what they're saying? And that's even the most dangerous thing is like, you know, it's the same thing with Father Peter. It's like all this, it's the same thing with Father Sarah from Rose too, man. You, you see the same thing with people. All of them. A lot people, of them. It's like, I remember coming and everyone's just like, oh, Father Sarah from Rose. If you're so like, he's wacko, people like, and it's like, I, I've I've been I've always known this. I'm like, whenever I hear people say it's like, have you ever read anything that he's written before? Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Same thing with, you know, I mean, it's like, look, Father Peter may have some, you know, opinions and some perspectives on things that, you know, may be difficult for people to swallow, which is fine. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, if you take most of what he's saying, it's like, listen to what he's saying, not how he's saying it. And not even in the context, like, what is he saying? What are these people saying? Listen to what Jay Dyer is saying. I mean, beyond, like, the other stuff. Like, when we get into dogma, the the tradition of the church, the teachings of the church, you know, even, even to some degree, the, the the philosophical, the area in which, in which the church begins to approach philosophy, it's like, what are they saying? And I think if people can just sober up a little bit, because that's, that's the big problem with a lot of the orthosphere stuff is that, the audience and the people get caught up in it. It is, they do get caught up in it in the same way they would get caught up with like Facebook chat room beefs. Yeah. But like, yeah. that doesn't mean that the content that is being put out isn't because, you know, the reality is, is that you got people who are doing really high level stuff like DPH over at, you know, church, uh, you know, Koto, Church of Eternal Logos, high, high level, you know, discussion of things. Who just That's, had Father Peter here's on, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, forgive me. It, this, you know, this is a lot like, you know, I remember I tell people, it's like, man, you know, uh, when AFR, they, you know, with um, back in the day before AFR was, you know, but like. Ancient Faith Radio. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you have like Father Hopko and all that stuff you put out, yeah, whatever, you know, it's like, again, nobody is perfect and it's just you know it, it is it is what it is i'll tell you guys a little secret <laughs> sometimes it's better to listen to someone who you don't agree with you can learn more a lot of yeah. times and i'm not yeah. saying that it's someone who's in heresy you don't listen to that but if someone's maybe is not heretical but has a different perspective you can learn a lot more right that's the whole echo chamber thing but anyways to the point i was getting at is man you're getting high level information being given to you like seminary level education and that you know and again people are just so glutted and spoiled now and and it and just the level of these conversations like again um and i i could be wrong because i could only do so many minutes of it but that that gabe guy and michael often like maybe they got into a very good discussion 
on, you know, the Palamite controversy in regards Doubtful. of how the West takes, but I highly doubt it. Doubtful. I, I highly doubt it. I bet not with that th- thumbnail. Not with that you know thumbnail. I mean? That's not the orientation of that thumbnail. It's not. And so that that's the thing is like, you know, so much of it is like they're worried about it, but it's just like they're just feeding the talking of the trash thing. Now, someone's going to say, but aren't you doing that right now, Father Turbo? Yeah, probably. But like at the same time, our project is of a different nature. It always has been. And my whole thing is I don't really talk to people about things of an academic nature per se. I we discuss things of a much more kind of pastoral and uh, I don't know what else you would call it, but it, it's a different thing. So for me, I'm just kind of like throwing out a little bit, a little bit of warning to the sheep in regards of, you know, it, I, I think people are going to start seeing a tightening up in the wrong way, probably in the next, you know, these, it's probably going to start happening where people are going to really start trying to tighten up things and, and again, in a wrong way, authoritarianism in the wrong way. Um, Would you well, say, Father, Father I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what, like. Can I say one thing was, really quick, go, Cyprian? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Just to summarize, I'm very sorry. Really quick. You're saying, to maybe summarize, being nice creates blind spots. Like, if you're kind, it creates blind spots where you're just not able no, to no, see no, things. No, no, no. Being kind doesn't create blind spots. I'm sorry, being nice. Being nice, <laughs> being just wanting people to like you. Yeah, wanting, yeah, wanting, I, wanting I, to I be think, polite. For the sake of politeness. Exactly. It creates areas you just can't see because you're just like, I can't talk about that. That would be rude. Like, that would be very like, I don't want to shake the boat. So anyway, sorry, Cyprian. That's well, all. I, yeah. That's- I, and and the, the thing I want to I want to expand this because actually what that's from the left. Actually, what I saw was from the right. And I think that like father actually just said what the principle is like that I'm seeing is. Wanting want putting virtue on being accepted especially by the people who have who has been you know accepting you in the past you're in group sort of like being able to be the idea that you could become orthodox and yet still not shed any of your old right. allegiances mm-hmm. whether that's on the left because the right. you're being so oh no it's Whether still right. the gays and everything but mm-hmm. on the right what i saw two days ago and that basically where i had to like off the responses and everything, because I, I commented on it and off the responses on it, I I, th- I think I'm going to put away Twitter for like the next. And it was a purely orthodox conversation with or, quote unquote orthodox people, some who I know were recently baptized and some who just have orthodox crosses in their profiles now. Mm-hmm. But basically what I saw was, you know, there's this there's this law in Florida now that uh, DeSantis, it went through the legislature. DeSantis had presented it, so he's going to sign it that says, um child uh sex predators now uh you can they can be given the death penalty which is an expansion of the death penalty beyond what the supreme court has said is a standard so it would be unconstitutional at this point it's like way beyond anything that's like a standard in the west um to expand and it's like okay that's that's one thing i'm definitely you know highly opposed to child sex predators but what it what got me to even respond on this, I think it'll be struck down by the Supreme Court. But what got me to respond on this was the response thread to Ian Miles Chong sort of announcing this and giving the link. What I saw was a bunch of people with Orthodox crosses next to their name saying wood chipper, throw them in the wood chipper, throw them in the wood chipper. Man. And I was like, and that I was like, that's Whoa. crazy. That that's crazy. Shocked, right. So I responded. Yeah. I respond. And my response was, I, I put two things. I said, number one, I, I quote tweeted, I said, number one, generally, the Orthodox Church is against the death penalty. And I put links to the Russian hierarch saying we're not for bringing it back. I put a link to the ecumenical patriarch saying it's completely incompatible with with Christianity. I put a link to St. Justin Popovich writing that to kill the sinner for having sin is contrary to the gospel. He even calls it antichrist, right? And I was just like, and number two, making this expansion, like make, expanding it more, like asking the state to kill more people who, that they aren't currently. I was like, that's that's a fault. That's a fault to the right, even if you do support it. And that's, right? that's even handling... if you do support it. Sorry. And and the response back to to me on that was 
people with again orthodox crosses some who i know are orthodox saying no 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 the church the church isn't against uh the death penalty no 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 no. like that that's that well how could you even say this and how could you even say that's a fall to the right yeah. and i was just like wow you know this when, is this well, is incredible that that like that's your response to this is well, no we want to kill people let, let's even just because i'll make it even just kind of i want let's even boil it down a little bit because we can discuss that to some degree because some people will argue right because they'll talk about symphonia and the power of the state uh which traditionally has the power to to kill right I I mean, let's just start with like put him in the wood chipper. Let's just let's just let's just. I mean, start that's there. that's what got me to respond. Like, that let's these just start people there, wanted right? more than that. They because, wanted wood chipper because 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 like there's two separate things. I think this is important to dissect because kind of getting back to Tux, um, you know, dialogue or what or what monologue today or whatever that was a speech, right? Like. That portion in regards of the death penalty and the church, that's a that's to some degree a conversation we can have. Championing putting people in the wood chipper is not. You can feel yeah. the energy of that, the demonic yeah. energy of that, right? 100%. Like there's a difference between, you know, looking at how do we really deal in the fallen world with the reality of violence, the reality of people who will use their free will in a malevolent way. That's a conversation. We can even talk about it tonight. But I just want to say just one thing that we can absolutely, I can, I will absolutely put the stamp on is being dead serious. And here's the thing, you know, whatever, a couple beers, someone's in a locker room, <laughs> a couple, you know, couple white wines, couple spritzers, you know, while the kids are playing soccer. Okay. You make a joke. Uh, it's kind of rough, whatever. But when you like, yeah, put them in the wood chipper public forum and you're all about it. That's rough because that level of brutality, that level of uh, just, um, it, it, it's, it's not Christian. You know what I mean? Like that, that's that's just not, that's something pagans, you know, pagans get off on that. And I would just say, just so we can kind of understand, which is fine, you know, we all have our dark moments, you know what I mean? But let us not double down, right? L right or left on certain things. Because we can say like, yeah, 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 that is a bit extreme, right? We got to leave room for someone to say like, yeah, you know what? Here's the moment, Twitter, thumb was really hot. That's a bit much. So if you're a wood chipper guy, it's okay. God bless you. Walk it back. No problem. You know what I mean? But I think the point of it is, though, is that for the person who's like, nah, I'm doubling down on the wood chipper. It's like, you know what I mean? And, and I, the reason why I say that is because one thing we've talked about at length here is like, uh, you know, the brutality of regimes in regards of having new innovative way of torturing people is not that long ago. And it's generally those who are against Christ. You know what I mean? Like all the way to the Romanians. The lives of the saints. It's the just lives full of the saints. I mean, I mean, that's just so it's like we don't imitate our enemies like that. Like that's not that's not what Christ calls us to do. Um, and that's not a left or right thing. You know what I mean? That's just being a Christian. Now, I just want to I keep I've been wanting to say this all night. You know what the last toll house is? Mercy, lack of mercy. Oh shit, that was wrong. That's the last toll house. So people should really kind of keep that in mind. So we were actually having this discussion with a couple of brothers at the church the other day. In some cases, is it more spiritually beneficial to cut someone off? To be like, if this person is foaming at the mouth, I will never stop doing this behavior. I will not stop. I will sit in prison and think about of ways to do this again. And I will try every day to break out and do this thing again. You know, let's just call it like a serial rapist or something like that. I am going to do this again. I do not repent. I reject repentance. I don't want this. Like, is it more beneficial to cut them off at that point in a in a merciful way, not a wood chipper, 
but like yeah. like a, a firing squad or something like that is there like because yeah, my stance was i don't know i have no idea i'm no generally in my wokeness would you just... would you fire the would you fire the bullet would so, you would you stand and fire the bullet if if a pay, if i if i had a blessing from if we were living in byzantium or whatever no 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 it, i'm saying right now because if that's a, really the answer to your question, because in the gospel, that is the story of Christ and the adulterous woman. And and his answer to the crowd but is... She, let, but she was repentant. Cast the first stone. She wasn't. She was not repentant, actually. She was not. Oh, she wasn't? No. He oh. called her to repentance. He says, go and sin no more. But she was not repentant at that point. Okay. She was just caught. And I would just say, part of the thing is, like, first of all, these hypotheticals are like, ah, but... If you look at it, because there, this is the way to kind of understand it from my perspective, right? First of all, there's a big difference between, like, this is just how I see it. You know, this is and this how I, this is until God enlightens me, which I'm open to. You know, like, a, like, like, if someone is trying to, you know, rape your wife or your, or your daughter. I'm going to stop them from actively doing that. 100%. That is very different than someone who is, you know, incarcerated. And, and I would say this, part of the problem is the way that we approach incarceration, right? Because I think it falls to error on both ends, right? Because the reality is, is that it's not about rehabilitation, right? Our, our penal system is not about rehabilitation, but at the same time, it's too soft. That's that's so it it fails on both ends. Our jails are too soft. Yeah. But they're but they're also not geared towards repentance and, and rehabilitation. So it's like you pick one or the other. It's like if we're not gonna gear towards rehabilitation, which we don't, then they need to be way harder and not you know what I mean? Because the quote unquote humaneness that is basically wrongly used or or what so-called humane approaches which is so wrong used it actually makes the situation worse it it, it yeah because it's not a deterrent at all it's not a deterrent at all mm -hmm. so this is really the issue that's there you know what i mean the prisons are too soft right they're they're not and they're not geared towards rehabilitation so that's really the issue and so that person that that hypothetical person that you're talking about I mean, yeah, so we can't even talk about it because in this penal system that we have, which is completely broken, which is worthless. In fact, it's not even worthless. It's dangerous. Yeah, right? it's it's dangerous. Um, that's the problem. Right. And so it, it, it's the whole thing is it's really complicated because nothing about our system is geared towards genuine change. And I don't mean just like the penal system. I mean, like the education system, the healthcare system, none of these things. Healthcare is not about people being healthy and healed. Healthcare is about facilitating and 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 um, kind of engendering commerce. That's yeah. what the health system in this country is is sure. is for. Um, same thing with the penal system. Same thing with everything. Nothing is actually well. They're there industries, for, right? They're, they're industries. industries. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Though a better way, I think, to rephrase this hypothetical is this is the royal path. And mind you, I'm the host, so I can ask the questions I want to ask. But should Batman have killed Joker? Like, would that be the right thing to do in that situation? Like, I mean, I would argue but Batman's a... not the state. Well, sure. But again, like what I'm what I'm talking about here is at a certain point, it doesn't matter if it's the state versus it does matter, but for the sake of this question i'm asking now is it better to just you know what you you had a chance it might just be better because like there's the that precedent of the angel choking the child uh -huh. and like granted that's divine versus an individual you know the angel choked the child because the child's going to grow up and do a bunch of bad things you know if essentially this is the best way for the child to achieve salvation you know should should the batman kill the joker i mean i would argue ultimately it has to happen like it has to one way or the other. The Joker's Does kind Batman of ever like? Has Batman ever though like because Joker will get captured and then he'll get thrown in Arkham, yeah, right, and then 
if if the question is is what so so batman is like not killing the joker mm. right he's he's capturing him and the joker ends up in arkham like he's so he's got all these opportunities when the joker breaks out of arkham if the joker just decided that the joker was just gonna go and just go away and not do any more joker things and was just gonna retire from jokerdom would batman hunt him to kill him i would i mean i don't, I don't, I don't think, think so. i don't think so I don't, I don't think i think it would let him go i think it'd be batman's great delight for joker to stop i think he would no one would be happier than batman you'd be like okay hey, cool i don't gotta worry about this guy anymore like i can and worry if about joker other was stuff. incarcerated in arkham would batman break into arkham to kill him i don't I, I don't see i can't think of any precedent for that the one time i'm thinking where batman definitively killed the joker was in dark knight returns and that was only because he was like we cannot do this again he just killed like 19 boy scouts and was there running through an amusement park and he was shooting people as he was running along yeah, he's and in the middle of it he's in the middle yeah of that's it. that's what i was saying about that's the exact, exact point that's different than someone that he's being locked up and, and i would just throw this out here because i just want to say this you know christ is risen truth is so really is risen uh forget the hypotheticals yeah right everything is in the light of the resurrection and that's what people miss like I, I'm just telling you, like if you want to suss these things out, okay, great. Let's put it in the light of the resurrection. Now what? And that's what people don't understand, also too, about mm -hmm. violence. And it, you know, there's all kinds of ways to talk about violence in the Old Testament. Go talk to Father Stephen E. Young, great stuff, whatever. But the one thing that isn't kind of really approached in that, I don't think, is that past all the stuff, right? Christ did descend into Hades and preach to all those people, all those people that were, you know, dispatched. And everyone will be in the light of the resurrection, including you, oh, you know, boondock saint orthodox guy who you imagine yourself dispatching justice. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, like in the light of the resurrection, it's going to be a different thing. So I just but, think this I just I just think that's something to to bring up because again I'm all about the defense of you know I'm all about heroism I'm all about sacrifice I'm all about it 100% You know what I mean there's no greater love than a man has to lay down his life for his brethren right and that's not just metaphorical right um and like St. Paisio says you know we need more heroism you know we people need philotimo um we need men who are willing to you know, take a bullet and maybe even put a bullet in someone to defend their, their families, okay? That is very different than putting someone in a wood chipper. Like, there's a very different thing in, in regards of we are caught in honorable combat, I'm defending someone versus mm -hmm. how can I feed demonic bloodlust? How yeah. can I feed um, that part of that? How can I satiate that hunger that has been developed in me because I've watched tons of horror movies. I played tons of first person shooters and I envision myself a dark angel of justice. Like that is something completely different. And I'll just tell you something, these people very, I mean, I'm, I'm, I welcome you wood chipper people. We can discuss it, but very few of them have actually done real violence. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just I'm, because, I'm just, because of what it does to the per father. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that was actually for me. And I, I wanted to express this like that was for me. It wasn't about, you know, my seeing these people like this. It wasn't even like a hypothetical to me about like, oh, are they correct or not correct? Or let's argue about theology or church history. It was really like, wow, if you did this. Like if 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 the, if you were actually brought to like living out what you're talking about or imagining doing the harm that you would do to yourself, yeah, in yeah, so there's... doing it, it that's what because I saw people that I know who were expressing this sentiment and defending it, and I was like, if even if you knew that you were the person who influenced somebody else to do this. You, you, you're the the pain that would come to you, the suffering that would come to you because of this violence being done on another person, even if they had committed a horrendous act, would be so horrible. I mean, so let I me mean, just here's the thing, 
And this is where people don't know the gospel. People aren't, people haven't experienced Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. And again, whatever, I'll stand by it. Tons of people come into the church and, and have not experienced Christ yet. They've experienced ideology. They've experienced, you know, moral correctness, all these things. But when you experience Christ, it's a completely different thing. And that's where you get people who can't understand left or right some of the sentiments that come out of the fathers because they're speaking of the, the fathers are speaking from their experience with Christ. And a lot of people get it twisted. They think that the fathers are speaking about techniques or the fathers are speaking about, uh, you know, experiences in the kind of um, sensationalist kind of way that the fathers are speaking about from an experience of Christ and repentance and illumination, theoria, all that stuff. So it's, it's a very different thing. And that's why these questions, when people get into it, it's like, when you know Christ, these, they're not, they're not really dilemmas. I know someone's going to get mad at me, but I'm just saying, if, if you struggle with these things to that degree, all you need to do is just say, I don't know Christ as well as I should. Cause it's, it's, it is fairly simple in this. It's not easy, but it's fairly simple in the sense of our tradition has so many saints. Our tradition has direct teachings. There's teachings on it, right? And just to be really frank, if you get to know the one who our tradition is, is built around, built upon, and built for, you will very quickly repent of certain things because, like, you can't be a Christian and be a monster and it's at the same. No. And, that's what the, and that chimera is, is what the devil's all about these days is, is, and that's antichrist too. It's like getting, you know, a, um, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, right? The real power of Christ is not to bring a more moral society. The power of Christ is to transform murderers and adulterers and liars and sorcerers and all these people into sheep. That's, that's what he does. Yeah. And in the light of the resurrection, right? See, here's, here's what people don't get about this. Well, what am I going to do? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Here's your tough situation. My family, all this or that. I get it. But at the end of the day, again, there's a distinction between something's actively happening, right, versus you preempting something or even operating out of vengeance. Like, they're, they're, they're just separate things. One has to do with love, a living love, right, and care for the other. The other one has to do about you not being able to live with certain things. And that's right? more about you than about the it's thing. About, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... I've beaten people up before and that stuck with me, let alone actually like murdered someone. Like I can't imagine like from the old days, like I've it's not, it is whatever, but like we have been in fights and I've been hit and I've hit people and it's like, okay, well that, that you, you either have, you have the reason why the church puts a penance on a soldier. That's what I was going to say. Right? Yeah, I mean, to go I like mean, a pious soldier, a, pi a soldier who's, Fought, let's say, let's here's here's a hypothetical, right? An actual Christian Orthodox country and government and fighting to defend the motherland. Okay, great. And he he's actually a faithful soldier, right? He will need to be given penance. What's the penance there for? For the healing of his soul. Yeah. Because all although although it was a necessary evil that he committed, it was still an evil. And that evil has, at that point, has more to do with the poisoning of his own soul that needs to be healed. Yeah. Like that, see, that's that's orthodoxy, right? Like that's that's living life in the light of the resurrection all the time. And being in the light of the resurrection has nothing to do with like gluttoning yourself and and like like undoing all the work you did during the fast. That's not the light of the resurrection. The light of the resurrection is is seeing things in their eschatological and anagogical sense, ultimately complete and living, living in that light. That's what it's about. Yeah. They, Cause 
Yeah. I mean, the thing that, that I think father, like that's really important because like I couldn't do any of that stuff now sober. It would hit me too hard. The only reason why people, I think the only reason why it didn't hurt me more than is because I was drunk and like, you know, then you're like, Oh, whatever. I feel weird, but I go drink it off. Like, and then like, that'll stick with me. But ultimately like that kind of violence, like violence doesn't feel good. And it, it, it like, it might like play to some passion, some, like some anger that you have inside you. And as you're putting the beat down on someone, you might feel good, but it's in the same way that like, I don't know, like fornication feels good, like in the moment. And then afterwards it's deep shame and deep, like hurt and deep, like, wow, like, I can't believe I just did that. So like the idea of like in recovery, God, please protect me of like pounding someone's face like that. That doesn't sound like that's the rest of my month. Like if I do that, you know, at the beginning of a month or whatever, like that's the rest of my month. I have to think about that for the rest of that time that, you know, it, I guess I'm just trying to say, hey, turns out that messes that stuff messes you up, guys. So, I mean, I'm just going to say that. I'll, that's a hot take, I know, but I'll do what I got to do. Um, so, uh, you, Father, really quick, you used two really big words just a second ago. as uh, Experiencing the light and the eschatological, es- es- which is like the... Eschatological. Eschatological and the anagogical. They both have to do with like future and ultimate things. Oh, and- okay. Okay, cool. It's like when the fathers, when they, you know, there's a, a, like a patristic way of interpreting scriptures in this anagogical sense of like, how is this speaking to revealing to us the ultimate, you know, end of things, uh, the resolution of things like the, um, this, you know, Trinitarian centered, like God is on the throne, everything is done. You're like, what is it pointing us to? Like a kind of like the final layer like layers, layers, layers. What's the final layer there? That's that's what that is. Sure, sure. Yeah. Say for you I was just gonna say it's interesting too because ahead, if, you, if you think about like Fight Club, in some sense, and a lot of other things that have been in the waters culturally speaking for a lot of years, you can see where people um, have become not only on like ignorant but also seduced by the intoxication of of violence and how the quote-unquote cathartic aspect of it or what's 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 a seemingly cathartic aspect of violence is is um actually you know people are duped into it because I, i would just i would argue this it isn't that much of a jump in seeing that quote unquote cathartic aspect of violence let's say in a um, combat sport, which I love combat sports. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But the jump from there to what we're talking about in regards of vigilantism, um, I mean, despotic terror, it isn't number one, it's the farthest jump, but it, it actually isn't in many ways. And I think that's another thing that's really dangerous for people is, um, which is kind of what we, I guess that's what we've always been talking about is the setup for that, the setup for people to really, and it isn't just the outrage coming from the left, but it's, it's something that's been in the water for a long time to really um, disarm people against the way that, you know, the energy, the demonic energy behind violence and vengeance really disfigures the human soul. That's, Mm -hmm. that's, I think a key thing, you know, there's this, um, uh, a brother sent this to me today. It's like this Ukrainian national guy. I don't even know if he's a soldier. I just think he's like a national guy dressed up, but he's yelling at this reader who's Swiss about, you know, pick up the flag and this and this and that. And this reader, um, he says, you know, I love the Lord God, you know, and the guy's like, well, you know, like, pick up the flag, you defend Ukraine. And and I I just, it was interesting to me because that snapshot of someone facing that kind of intoxication, this person is so intoxicated and driven mad by, and isn't even just like the nationalism, but it's all the things, the outrage, the vengeance, the lust, 
all those things driving and, and really possessing a person and, and eventually make a, a nation, you know, nations becoming possessed. And I just think that, you know, we're, we've been there, but again, the one way is really obvious in regards to the debauchery, the fornication, that that's obvious. But the next step from that is the devouring of self, which comes with the violence and, and, you know, pride has a weird way. One of the fruits of pride is this feverish delusion that happens. And that feverish delusion, that's what leads to people to all kinds of very um, scary things, you know? So I know I just think it, it's, it's par for the course for those of us who are really trying. And that's why when St. Sarah from Rosie was talking about in the last days, you know, the trials being of, of a psychological nature and those who, you know, have to live, we have to live in the other world. It's like, it's just, it's, it's so evident right now because it isn't a matter of necessarily worrying about someone knocking down your door, but it's, it's watching people become infected uh, and pulled away from this kind of, you know, from being disciples of Christ, you know? Well, I found, I, I think, you know, on this particular issue that like, that generated the wood chipper, I think one of the things, and, and this, you know, because of the, the nature of it, this really didn't get a chance to be discussed, but it came to, it was obvious to me immediately when I saw it is this bill was brought up and championed by Ron DeSantis, who's about to run for president, who's trying to compete with Trump for the right wing. Right. And so immediately you look at it and you're like, wow, this is, this is like beyond like he know, he knows it's not constitutional. Of course he does. He knows that this would get struck down by the Supreme Court. But it's like, wow, here's this political move. And the, in the cynicism of the political move, of course, he's going to do it because he knows because he knows the wood chipper guys are there. Mm -hmm. And he knows that it's like, rah, rah. It's, it rallies. So it's like, wow, it's this was purposely made as bait for you to, like, indulge your passions in this same way. And it's interesting to me that it comes up the same week that Matthew McConaughey launches his his own religion, which he did today. Oh, he did. Right today was the, today was the launch of McConaughey. And first, he got his own sandwich. Now he's got his own religion. He's got mm. his own religion. He and uh, he did a live stream, and there were hundreds of thousands of people on it. And uh, hey, Brent, catch you a question. Yeah. How did you know? How Tell did I know? Truth. I don't know. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins opened for him. The whole nine, dude. No, but really, I just, how did you know? Because you, you've been on... I don't, I don't know how I know any of these things. You, you've been I on know, this... I see it. Hey, you've, been, you've been on his scent for a while. I'm just going to say... Long time. I've been saying that he's the AC for a while. I'm just going to say... He's competing like, for it. I mean, I'm not saying the AC, but I'm like, this guy is... That's an interesting he, concept, people competing for it. Who can, you know what I mean? Between, yeah. between him and, and, and your boy Elon, it's like, who's going to... Well, well, sh well shouldn't, the there, be a, shouldn't there be a competition, right? Elon. Won't, there, won't there be false ones too, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's a Elon's a tough one because he says so much stuff where I'm just like, you got he's it, man. You got it. Like, come on, just repent. But nah. what are you going to do? I'm, it's mm -hmm. not going to happen, mm -hmm. but I'm like. Mm -hmm. You see that guy's armor, man? You see that oh, suit he likes to wear? Come on. Uh. Oh, well, it's all, it's all about these, these cults. Right. That like for some reason now, since something happened in 2020, where whatever it was, everybody was opened up to becoming cult members. And I guess maybe it's because everybody was obedient. So everybody got broken in. Right. They obeyed absurd things. And maybe it's like if you start obeying absurd things, then you'll be open to obeying all kinds of absurd things. Mm -hmm. And so all these people are like, ooh, every. Oh, I could just get cult members out of people who wouldn't have been cult members before, right? Mm -hmm. It's like once you but I experienced that in my own life. It's like, you know, in the in the sort of wicked life I was leading, I I knew that there were certain it was almost like once I stepped over a certain line, it was just like, oh, I can step over it innumerable times now. I've stepped over it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh -huh. oh, I could go and then it's the nature of the next line, right? That's just the yeah, nature of go. sin. That's there you just, go. Yeah. People and and I, I think I think that it's a it's very it's very difficult 
for and like I say, I like I stepped away from Twitter because of this, because I just think it's I just think it's going to be very difficult to even have conversations. And I don't I honestly don't know, even though like I've I've and I'm I'm waiting and praying on it. But it's like I have felt like speaking and bearing witness. And I think that that's born fruit. And that's and this is sort of, you know, what I was bringing up to you guys. And maybe it's something that we could talk for another time. But it's like how to discern when you know, engaging like when it's bearing witness and when it's just conflict, which I think Mm -hmm. that this ties into like not so much father Peter hears because I don't think he's really necessarily shot back in the same way, but certainly like Jay Dyer, right. Who's always willing to like debate somebody, which is, which is great from a standpoint Mm -hmm. when you're looking for truth, but when it's just to be in conflict Mm -hmm. and just to be right, you know what that's, I mean? Like that's kind of when is that's kind of not my beef because I don't I can't watch Jay Dyer. And it's not because he's wrong. He's he's right. But it tends to make mm-hmm. me angry. Like and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And like, that's a passion I struggle with is this like because then I'm like, well, we got to do something, you know, and like and as that draw to like not actually like I'm not going to do anything with that vigilantism. Like it's like now I'm marching like with the picket or whatever because it's like it just gets me so riled up that's the reason why i can't really watch him personally is it's like conflict it just it stirs up conflict in me to the point where like i'm like i have to externalize that conflict in a way that's like not necessarily bearing witness but bearing like the gospel according to andrew you know what i mean like i'm like no that's wrong for this mm-hmm. reason and da, 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 da. and i may have gotten like the letter of the law completely correct which i didn't but I've also missed the spirit completely because I'm not doing anything with love at that point. I'm not just talking about like being nice. I'm like, I've, I've come at this person of a place of like anger. I really have to step back. Like I walk well, away from this conversation yeah, I mean, feeling weird. I, I, I mean, I, I think the thing is too, is like, it's really a conversation about like what's kind of like next because, because from my perspective, you know, I'm all about the chess. Right. And so like everyone has their thing, but for me, I'm just, I love God's people because I love God. I love Christ, you know? And so my heart has always been to um, just share what I, what I've experienced and I've known about our Lord so that people can actually get where they need to get to. Cause it's, we've, we're in this really, we've been in this very difficult time in which, you know, Things have been, things have never been as clear as they've ever, you know, they've never been so clear, but at, but so muddled at the same time. So to really help people, you know, come to crisis has always been the thing for me, you know, these are the rooftops. Um, but the question then becomes, you know, like at what point, and, and I think this is, it's different, right? Because when it's your livelihood, not throwing shade, when it's your livelihood, it's your livelihood, you know, but I, I think taking a step back and looking at it, it's like, like for me, um, I've always enjoyed um, these kind of platforms in regards to, because again, like I said, you know, whether it was uh, Thomas Hopko, you know, you know, make God grand in paradise, you know, um, all the way through, it's like getting great information. Cause if you love the church and you love, you know, you love life in the church, her history, like all the stuff, then it's great. But most people, like to your point, Andrew, a lot of people, they're not really tuning in for that. They're not, they're not, and that's not anybody's fault. I mean, if you're like, whether it's Jay Dyer, whether it's whoever, they're making their content, you know, that make their content. And they're not responsible if someone's not actually watching their content for what it's created for. Mm -hmm. So that's not even, you know, that's kind of like, you know, was somebody killing, were kids killing themselves because they played an Ozzy Osbourne record backwards? Ah, I don't know. Right, you see know, going. I see where you're going. But at the end of the day, it's like, I, you know, I still want to, I'm not going to stop Ozzy from making his music. You know what I mean? But the reality is, is that, you know, when we're talking about the church, and I think this is what I come, come back around to, um, when we're talking about the church, I just, I have to take a stand, you know, as a disciple of Christ, 
you know, as a member of the church and as a priest, that like certain things are just, they're not okay. You know what I mean? They're, they're not, they're not okay. And people promoting things um, to the detriment of people growing in the life of Christ, you know, like bad ecumenism, like, listen, um, I, when I first came into the church, it was not talked about widely, but you know what? When I would go to various gatherings where there would be uh, fathers from Athos speaking in Southern California, when there'd be, you know, various speakers, there was, I mean, my first time hearing about ecumenism as like a heresy was in the early 2000s. We were first coming, like we weren't even, we weren't even received in the church. And I remember going to a gathering and like, ooh, like that's weird. What is this? Like, I'm just saying this because these things that are really problematic, they they aren't just popping up now because extremists like Deacon Ananias and Father Peter here. They're popping up because it's always been there. Mm -hmm. And now these platforms are able to disseminate these things that are watering down the life in the church. And that's not a new thing. That has nothing to that was happening before COVIDism and all this stuff. It's only accelerated it. You know, the the platforms have, all, have already accelerated. And that's why I think, you know, there, there, there is a need to address these things because people are, you know, easily influenced. And, you know, I'm just, I guess what I'm trying to get at with this last section is, that is a real need. And, and I, I do see it as, as, as a need, you know, um, ministry in the truest sense of, you know, not just kind of like a self-serving hobby, but in the sense of like, there's a need to really present the um, unpopular, unfettered, unwatered down truths of our, of our tradition. You know what I mean? Things that I know, I know are not popular um, people, it makes people uncomfortable, but they need to be presented because so much of this other stuff is being presented as like, oh, this is the tradition. And it's like, uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's not the tradition. It's a very difficult kind of, I, I, I absolutely see and like, I, and, and hear what you're saying, father. And it makes me uncomfortable because I not, not what you're saying is right. <laughs> and like so often, like what, what, what makes me uncomfortable is like, because it, because it's necessarily a cross because of course, you know, to, to it's inappropriate to be just calling everybody that disagrees with you a heretic, right? Like, and we see that in the ortho online sure. sphere all the time, right? That it's like, heretic, heretic, you don't agree with me, so you're a heretic. You don't agree with me, so you're a heretic. And Royal Path, it's also not right to be confronted by a heresy and to say, and to say nothing. That's right. Right? So you it's like... Slap in hand. You start yeah, slapping it's, some rules. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm thinking and, and it, yeah, of course, like I'm thinking now I'm thinking about all these saints because immediately what came to me is like what immediately popped into my head listening to you there was like, oh, well, that's the role for an ecumenical council. And then I was like, no, I feel like I'm reading a lot of lives of saints who are like before any of the councils when it's like this heresy, this heresy, this heresy, where they're like martyred. Because they're like, no, the, whoever's in charge, this governor is a follower of this heresy, and they won't stop saying that's a heresy. Yeah. And they're martyred mm -hmm. for it way before the ecumenical councils. I mean, right. And they're martyred for it. St. John, St. John Chrysostom just got back, just got back and was like just getting settled again when that lady, I can never remember her name, built the statue of herself right outside the church. And he's like, again okay cool all right this mm -hmm. is wrong this is wrong and what happened to him he got exiled again and pretty much marched to death i mean like it's not a heresy but it is but it's like also but like i mean maximus the confessor i mean dude got his tongue and ripped out and his hand cut off and it was just mm -hmm. like well you know he denounced it long before a council did so there's mm -hmm. like there's a ton of precedent of people just being like because it's like because it's not really about a council 
Don't get me wrong. Right. The right. councils are one of the one of the measures and litmus of our of of truth, right? But it's not really about a council because it's it's about the faithful bearing witness. Yeah. Like it's it's always been about that. The council ratifies and and, and makes formal what the church has already known. Yeah. Right? The the councils don't invent or develop anything. The councils do the the mining in which the the truth that the Holy Spirit has the truth of the Holy Spirit's always been there. Right. Yeah. And so the council is just makes formal what's what's what is true. You see what like I'm saying? The challenge and, and this is this is really important because you know, I mean, we're at a time where it's like people like one of the real dangers is um one of the dangers actually <clears throat> with the kind of influx of people is that the Protestant ethos and what i mean by that is like just being an american there's a protestant ethos that protestant ethos which is anti-hierarchical it's really problematic right and that's that's one of the things that isn't talked a lot about i just want to i'll bring it up now because what what a lot of people don't understand because there's a lot of people who've who've come in subsequent of 20 and they kind of don't really understand how tough it was for us in the church because they just see like, oh, cool. The Orthodox church doesn't change, doesn't compromise, and it's old. Great. I'm in. Um, and and they were able to be like, well, uh, like my litmus is, you know, is the church doing wokey stuff or not? Okay, it's not cool. That's where I'll go. Great. No problem. I get that. But what they don't know, what they can't appreciate, what they don't understand is for those of us who are already in the church and who have been taking the tradition and trying to live in a life of obedience, especially those of us who are clergy, like, I'll just, for the record, because I have like the best bishop, it was easy for me, not so easy for the rest of my brothers. Um, and what I'm trying to get at is what's lost is it isn't about being cavalier and like, forget you, Bishop, you know, here's the big middle. That's not how this works. And that's part of how, you know, the evil one is behind it too, because of the, the traps that are set, because the traps that are set are there, not just to um, undermine others, but undermine yourself. And when you, when you don't really discern when you don't discern the fact that you have to bear the cross in these situations, it becomes very easy to throw the cross off for the sake of your ideology. And that's another side of this that I, I, I just want to bring this in because we're coming to, we're at a time, I think, where a lot of people, they're ready to just kind of tell their priest off, like they're watching him every Sunday, you know, they're watching on, with one eye, they're like, has the news released any weird pandemic thing and with the other eye, they're like, is he going to wear a mask again? And it's like, I get it. I, I get it. But like, the thing is, is it's not that simple because I've talked to so many good Christians who have just really agonized over being patient with their priest and just recognizing he's, he isn't just some shill that's going along with the state. He's actually trying to, honor his his priesthood honor christ honor the bishop honor christ by honoring his bishop whether and I, and I know there's a whole thing there's been father peter and others have done you know hours long of content talking about it go see them for like the correct answer what i'm talking about here is just having people be aware of how difficult it is and that you need to understand it because a lot of people they're they are they this is where Gabe is actually, I think, correct in that little snippet that I did see is there is a little change that's subtly happening to the faith. And that is people getting an idea of really disregarding the hierarchical aspect and, and how that's salvific. Right. So there is salvific aspects of being under the yoke of, to be frank, bad hierarchy. You know what I mean? Like there, there, there is something that's worked out of people you know we you can go you can i mean when you look at 
Um, like we want to talk about people like Mark of St. Mark of Ephesus, St. John Chris Austin, St. Max. We want it's like people just think that the slightest thing they were flying off half cocked, guns blazing, and like, yeah, just smacking people, cussing people out, and just you know, turning tables. And it's like, no, there's a whole process of praying, desiring repentance of the people that are in heresy. Like, it isn't just a matter of wanting to get of wanting to wild out just because you got pent up stuff. Sure. It's, 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 it's super important because that's not the life of the church. Right. And so I, I just want to take the sexiness out of some of the kind of like, you know, middle finger aspect that some people want to bring into the church. It's, it's like sexy. It's probably the right thing to do. Yeah. You know, I mean, really being willing to, to be long suffering is a thing. And like the again, you some people like okay, which, which like which one is it, Father? Well, I'm, I'm saying like that's part of the problem. It's like it isn't which one. It's like it's that middle path of like bearing the cross, right? Yeah, and you don't, you don't want a person, say Christ. You don't want to get per- closer to a person. You want an ideology. If it's either or, then you don't want like the the person of Christ. You don't want to get closer to the person of Christ, the King of all. You want an ideology. Because a person yeah, 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 yeah. But, but what I'm trying to get at with this though is that that isn't just some lofty thing that gets played out. in do you obey your priest or not? You know what I mean? Do you oh, just go like? Oh. Do you just like? It doesn't get played because that's the thing is people. A lot of people can be living in their heads. They have their own vision of what they think. That's why I was trying to give, trying to be charitable towards that um, Gabe guy. Like, there is an aspect of people being not quote, I don't like that we're radicalized, but they like there is a there's a cowboy kind of like aspect to it that like, people really need to watch out for because that's not that's not the life in the church in that sense, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's important because that plays out like in a parish because that's the other side of this is that people living in cyberspace like ortho cyber like cyber ortho guys like they're weird yeah and they're and they're they're weird because they don't live in a parish and and they go like no my parish is you know blah 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 it's like yeah but like you going once a once a month or even going and just being in the back and like not praying and being weird that's not being in a parish like part of being in a parish is is living life with the people in that parish, including the priest who maybe you don't get along with. Like that's how you're saved. You're not saved by having a bunch of guys with tiki torches and pitchforks sharing the same thing. You're looking for the next guy to kill. That's not that's not the life in the church. And so I think that's that I'm trying to like really bring it down home. Because that's what a lot of people aren't really understanding or talking about in this context, getting back to like how we started off with like ortho cyber stuff is that this stuff gets worked out, not in the way that you want it. This gets worked out with learning to be long suffering, merciful, humble. You know what I mean? And really, you know, like we've said here a million times, you, you got to know your line and that line Really, I'm going to give a corrective to that. The line shouldn't be arbitrary, like, oh, I, this is the line that I chose. You should really go before your God and say, what's the line? Like, where's the line? So, like, when I'm talking about, for instance, uh, hey, yeah, I'm not a pacifist, right? So it's like, if someone's actively assaulting your wife, I will stop it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. That's not, that's not a line that I'm just arbitrarily choosing because that's a line that I've come to years of prayer speaking with spiritual fathers like working through it like i've gone i've you know i've been at times of radical pacifist like whatever it's like i've come to this place from from actually seeking god on it that that's where i'm at right seeking Um, truth seeking truth who is a person who is a person seeking god right so christ so that's what i'm getting at is this is like you got to know your line but your line isn't what you want. Your line should be, 
you actually seeking God and you being willing to change what you think your line should be. Right. Mm. But, but from there, you know what I mean? And that's why there's the church. You have a Godfather, you have spiritual fathers, you have the canons and the dogmas. There's all these things in the church that gives you on how to live your life, which is another side of what I'm trying to say is that these people who they just, you know, it's the, it's the other side of the cult, right? It's like, I I want to be in the anti-woke cult. I want to be in the, I want orthodoxy to be the anti-woke cult. And an, orthodoxy is not the anti-woke cult. Orthodoxy is the church of Jesus Christ. That's, that's what she is. So there has to be points where you are challenged because you're, you are not Christ and you're not God. And I guarantee you, you have opinions, passions, and dispositions that are wrong. All of us do. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the ways that you know you're in Christ is that you, is like, you can start, num you can start naming. I can, you can start naming all these things that like, you don't like, you didn't like, but you gave them up because Christ called you to it. That's one of the ways you know that you're in Christ. Not that like, I found the place where they hate everybody that I hate too. That's not, that's not, yeah. that's not. The yeah. How, yeah. Cause, cause how could that even be? Right. Like, and why would you even become orthodox? Like, why would you why would you even go to to that place? Because like that, that should be the indication that this is not the place for you to go. Like, it should be the if if you go somewhere and it demands no change from you, no growth from you and every single thing that you currently think is correct, mm -hmm. it does not argue with at all. And as a matter of fact, it's like. Oh, what are you talking about? That's absolutely correct on every issue you currently that's, believe. You're actually encountering Satan. That's yeah. therapy. I mean, that's therapy a lot. Like you go, you go pay someone to like be like everything that you are is okay. Like you but, do not need to change. It's but so you know what the problem is though, is there's a lot of people. Here's the other side of it too. Like, you know, I mean, this is just a this this tonight's all over the place, but like look, I'm just gonna tell people clickety clack go ahead and get on your keyboards uh there's some truth to like i'm gonna say the big scary word right there is truth to like white supremacists coming to orthodoxy because they saw it as like this is an ethno church where they support you know killing race mixers and all this stuff it's like that that was real that wasn't uh that's like a real thing and it happened long before charlottesville right mm -hmm. so like those things are real. Like they're not to the degree that the race baiters and the race hustlers and all this stuff put it out to be, but it's, it's a real thing. Why? Because, you know, people are always coming to the church and to Christ for their own ends, right? Simon Magus, how much do I have to pay you for this power of the Holy Spirit? You know, it's like, that's, that's always been a thing. Right. Governments have always tried to use Christ for their own end. People do it all the time. Nevertheless, right. Christ must be preached. And even those people, there's plenty of people, you know, I got a, you know, I got a spiritual son who was one of them. You know what I mean? I've got people who are like that. They come in, they have the wrong idea, but guess what? You know, racism, sexism, like all this stuff, Christ deals with all of it. And that's that's the other side of it is like it's not like <laughs> trust me when I tell you, uh if you're willing to change, you know, Christ can deal with you and will. And sometimes here's the thing, sometimes you may not be willing to change, but Christ is the one who sets the trap. He's the one who's hunting. Right? He's hunting you. And so if you find yourself in his crosshairs, pun intended, you know. He has a way of breaking you because Saul was one of them, right? Mm, Saul was one of them. And so, and that's, that's one of my big gripes. And I was, I was under that delusion. Here's, you know, public repentance. I was under that in my own passion for years too, in regards of just, you know, my own issues, with like, you know, making race and racism, like the worst thing, but like at the end of the day, you know what? I mean, God changes people's hearts. So let them all come in. Just let them know that, like, you know, you think you're setting the trap, but the trap has been set for you. Yeah. And, and Christ is the one who's going to be victorious. 
So it's better that the wood chipper guys have the orthodox yeah. cross or or are wearing the orthodox cross than that they wouldn't be wearing the orthodox. Yeah, cross. it's it's like I said to them earlier. I said earlier in this episode, I said, "Don't wear wood chipper guy. It's okay." Right. Got it. It's okay because because yep. the wood chipper guy. It's like you don't know. Like clickety clackety, give me a call. I'll help you out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. just you're feeding off demonic energy. It's it's really it's a really good vino. I get it. It's got punch. Mm-hmm. But you don't you don't want to be drinking that stuff. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Forever. You don't you don't want to be drinking that stuff. It's it's you think it's you think it's whiskey, but it's moonshine and it's a bad kind. You'll go blind really quick from drinking it. Mm-hmm. You know, so and we'd rather have them in the hospital than outside of it. Rather have yeah. them in the hospital than outside of it. And that's why either way, you know, I'm like, look, you know, um, because again, right, I'm like there was a time, but I mean, just you can't be offended about those things because it is a hospital and you're either sick or you're one of the nurses and doctors. And even us nurses and doctors are getting worked on, too. Right. But like mm-hmm. at the you know, at the end of the day, that goes both ways. It's like people like the church does well when the people in the hospital don't mistake it for being the Hall of Fame. Like your your picture isn't on the wall and it shouldn't be on the wall you haven't earned anything to be on the wall right you haven't you haven't sacrificed anything um there's this great quote by other Ephraim talking about what saint paul sacrificed and what he went through and he's basically saying like i haven't gone through any of those things that saint paul went through you know what i mean and that's elder Ephraim, you know talking it's like so many of these people who they think they're God's gift to the church because they hate the Wokies or because they hate the, the, the right wing monsters and the racists. It's like, you're both wrong. You're both just shut up. You know what I mean? Shut up, go to church, pray, repent, and just follow the commandments of Christ. Yeah. You know, like hell waits everyone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hell awaits. So, I mean, that's, yeah, a great place to end. A great place to end. So, I um, I think uh, next week we have a bunch of really really good questions. I think if uh, the one I had picked for this episode, which uh, had dealt with working on Sundays and the baptism that they received, I think it would add me another half hour discussion right there. So we're gonna save it. We're gonna save it for next week, and maybe we'll do a Q and A episode. So. To everyone who wrote in and who is still listening, I have got your emails. We're going to, we actually think we have a volunteer to help us with the emails because a bunch of them are just not getting responded to. And that's my fault. I'm just not great at it. And I just, and humility just have to recognize like this is just not one of my strengths is, is corresponding with people. So I think we actually have someone who can help. Um, so we're going to, we're going to maybe roll with that. Um, uh, what do we do at the end of the show? I pre- oh, okay. So, um, it's been, it's so, been long. so long. It has been a little while. Hey, and by the way, I'm going to say that God willing, we're doing this time, this same time next year. I'm just going to go yeah. and put it out there. Last two weeks of Lent, or I would say Lent or Pascha and Holy Week, don't expect a podcast. Like, I just think that from here on out, like, we should just make that clear. I'm sure everyone understands. I didn't, you know, I didn't receive any angry emails being like, what's going on guys, you know, whatever. Everyone understands, I'm sure. And they struggle with their own struggle and everything, but I'm just letting everybody know probably from here on out. And same with most major feasts and fasts and stuff like that. We're, we're, we probably will skip that week um, just to do the thing that we're supposed to do. And then anytime we mention a music or an artist, we try and stick it on the playlist. I still have not updated it in it's going on months now, but there's still a lot of good music on there. Um, it's Royal Path podcast playlist, something like that's on Spotify. Um, also, if you want to reach out for now, please uh, reach out to Andrew at Royal Path uh, dot net dot network. network dot network. Um, we also have a um, merch store we don't see any of that money two-thirds go to the uh parish and then another third goes to the person who makes it that is uh royal path dot store yep okay cool nailed it in one um and uh 
like I said, I've got everybody's emails. I should just do an auto generator response, but we've got them. I've got them ready to go. I think we'll do a Q and a episode next time unless something big happens in the next week that we absolutely need to talk about. Um, other than that, thank you for having a good night. Is that Christ is risen in truth. He is risen. Truth Bye. Is risen. <laughs>